Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collective podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Hi, and welcome to TFLP to a uh, special uh, pre-recorded episode this week. Um, <clears throat> so, yep, so uh, uh, tonight uh, we have Christian, who brought his own Massey. Her name's so, not Massey, her name's Roxy. <laughs> so, Roxy. She's totally different. Special guest on the show, Roxy. Yep. And, uh, and, and then I, I also... Uh, Picked up somebody here for for the show as well, uh, Serge. Hello, I'm back for the first time in like months. Yeah, it's, it's been a little while. So we missed you. Uh, welcome back. Yeah, it's good to be back. And uh, and then and then we also have uh, over there in the bottom right, uh, we've got uh, Rob. Howdy, everybody. Hey, Rob. It's Rob. Hey. It's awesome. We've never had this group of people on before. It's fun. Mm-mm. That's that true. Is, that is true. Wow. A, a completely new combination. That's crazy. Scramble City up in here. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's good. <clears throat> so, uh, so, yeah. So, tonight's episode... Uh, we got a, a suggestion, um, and, and we've been kind of talking about this for a while, um, is uh, spoiled with choice um, is, you know, just the amount of choice we have as collectors. And it's really not just Transformers, but, you know, collectors in general, uh, you know, all, all the choices that we have now, um, you know, are, are, are we spoiled as collectors? Are we enjoying ourselves as much? is you know collectors with the fact that we have so much now so so serge this is your topic so i guess uh, you want to start us off what you what you're thinking yeah well i mean me and christian have talked about this a lot uh before this that's how we wanted to bring the idea to the show was because we've already talked about this extensively on our own and then we remembered that we're both castmates on a podcast yeah so, so maybe the audience would like to enjoy the discussion. Uh, but I mean, basically, this has been like, I don't know. Um, we were kind of talking about how the fandom itself has evolved in the time that we've been in it. Uh, I've been active in it since like the ROTF days. So not as long as some people have been in it, but long enough to see it change. And with every year, it changes. You know, uh, it's an, uh, the fandom is an ever evolving being. Uh, but just recently, we've noticed that there's just a lot of negativity going around, and, and a lot of it is is still directed towards very, I don't even know the term how to put it, but I, I guess there's just things we should really we take we take for granted, and we started to think about other fandoms, like for example, you know, the Star Wars. There's a lot of Star Wars merch, but how much of it? is geared towards collectors and you know we started thinking about the the discussion about how us as transformers fans we're very spoiled especially because we like to think that transformers is bigger than it is compared to some other things it's not that big the only reason that it's in the mainstream right now is because of the movies the movies reminded everyone that it exists before that you know is maybe the people who grew up with it uh, the people who watched Beast Wars growing up, those are really mostly the people who remembered it. And now that it, the, because of the movies, every, it's a household name. But it's still, it, even though it's a household name, it's still not, you know, it's not Star Wars big. It's not Marvel big. And so, you know, if you really sit down and think about it, for something that's relatively, I don't want to say small, but not as big as other franchises, 
we have a lot of choice, both official and unofficial. You know, what other toy lines from other fandoms have multiple price points? You know, we have like the Legends, the new Commanders, I think they're called, those little like the Battlemasters, Deluxe, <clears throat> Voyager, Leader, uh, whatever I mean, Jetfire is, Supreme. I mean, beyond that, there's even like you know. the three step changers, cyberverse, uh, the big dumb doll things. I mean, it's all over. There's yes, yeah. oh yeah, we got we got yeah. masterpiece, and all of that is relatively very easy to get. We may not find the exact figure we want, but you walk into any store, nine times out of ten, you'll see some sort of product on the shelf. Look at other fandoms like Star Wars; they have the Black Series. And then their three and three quarter vintage collection. That's it. You know, you you might here and there you might have these weird lines like those big kind of like Barbie doll kind of styled figures that they did a couple of those. Uh, but their bread and butter is the six inch and the three and three quarters inch. Outside of that, there's not much. Same thing with Marvel. It's either Marvel Legends or Hot Toys. That's about it. They got rid of the the Marvel Universe or three and three quarter stuff a long time ago. All that's left is their Marvel Legends stuff or their Hot Toys. If you can't afford Hot Toys, you're stuck with Marvel Legends. With Transformers, that's, if you, I mean, well, I don't want to say you're stuck with well, it, but it's you don't have well, a no, lot. You there's don't have as Mayfax, many choices. Yeah, there's, there's Mayfax. There's Mezco. And they also have a lot of statues too. There's, they, there's you know, Revel Tech. Fig Warts. But Marvel, I, I Marvel goes think, wide. <clears throat> yeah, but Mar- I don't think those are as as accessible. As let's say you know, right? Yeah, you know, like know. the stuff that we have here. Not what the you see on the store shelves in the Target or whatever. Yeah, the and that's kind of the point. Is I'm saying is it's not that there's lack of product in these other lines. It's just not as accessible. You know, unless right. you're a hardcore collector, you know, you're someone who's very active in the fandom. You you really kind of have to work to get these. You know, you got to be on top of pre-orders because oftentimes you miss the pre-orders, you're screwed. You missed a pre-order on a very popular Mafex figure. Well, good luck finding it, especially because some of these collector's items they don't reissue very often. Like this, you miss an SH figure art. It's not they're not going to reissue it. Very seldom I've seen them reissue stuff. Well, and, and the with, thing with, is, is like Star Wars really waxes and wanes with the movies. You know, like when the movies come out, I mean, you're going to have like an entire aisle at Walmart of Star Wars figures, but like in between that, you're not going to have that. And um, you know there may be certain vehicles that you want that like they didn't re-release it this time. So it's like, you might be able to get a, you know, millennium Falcon, but is it the one that you want or, you know, just what, whatever it may be that uh, they, if they didn't release it this time, you don't, you know, you don't get it. And it all really, you know, and I agree hundred percent with that. Cause it all really does boil down to what's in theaters. Same thing is with Marvel. If, if, a, if a movie's coming out, there's tons of MCU figures uh, in the in the Legends line, they'll throw in a couple, you know, comic characters, uh, or well, at least or comic versions of the characters, or other characters that are not in the MCU. But with Transformers, look at us now. I mean, we're getting both. It's a non-movie year. Even when it was a movie year, we were still getting a lot of G1 stuff. We're we're still getting, you know, we were getting Beast Wars stuff in 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 the Masterpiece line, uh, and we're getting the movie stuff in the Studio Series line. So it's a it's a good mix of things. Whereas, like you said, especially with Star Wars, a movie comes out, that's all that they're pumping out. They're pumping out characters from the brand new movie because that's what they want to sell. So will throw in here and there, you know, a character from one of the other movies. But, you know, generally, I want to say like 90% of the product they're putting out is from the new movie because that's what they're trying to sell. But well, uh, look at Bumblebee, the way that they handled the Bumblebee line. They m- incorporated it into There was a Bumblebee line? line. It well, was incorporated was. It into an existing line. It wasn't collector well, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was very... Yeah, it the was collector very stuff small. was all studio series. Um, but the thing I think is really interesting about Transformers is just how liquid the Transformer, uh, the secondary market is. And I, I feel like that's not something that you see with any other like collectible line. Oh. Like you were touching on before... That like you're um uh you know they release a something and then it's gone 
And so, like, Masterpiece, for example, like, I mean, the value of Masterpiece never goes, shoots through the roof, because once it gets up there, they just re-release it. Oh, Soundwave is getting expensive. Like, here's the Soundwave mm-hmm. again. Here's the Starscream again. Here's whatever. And not only that, but, I mean, look at all the KO stuff, you know? It, it's like nine times out of ten, whatever comes out that Takara releases, they KO. And there's not a lot of other fandoms that get bootlegs of this quality. I mean, I have a couple here, like the oversized stuff that is like, you know, back, back even even 10 years ago, you talked about bootleg Transformers. First thing that popped into your head were those, you know, like the little dollar store, or grocery store, like, you know, basically the like trash plastic. Yeah, yeah, those yeah. little, like very brittle Chinese KOs. Now you get these insane oversized figures with, Twice the articulation, twice the paint apps. Half of it is metal. Got a bunch of electronics in it. More detail, and they've actually remolded parts. Uh, but I'm glad you brought up uh, the aftermarket. That also brought up another point that Christian and I brought up was the TF Wiki. Find me another fandom that has something that is that extensive. When I was trying to look up, because my, my favorite one of my favorite dro- my favorite droid from Star Wars is uh, R5D4. I tried looking up a list of every toy that they've had. I couldn't find one. You go on TF Wiki, you want to find every single movie Megatron they've released. They have it with pictures, the size class, the year it came out, little trivia facts about it. You know, any any other trivia facts that came up like with the with the release of it or the cancellation of it. They even have canceled stuff that yeah. you may not even they might not have a picture of it, but they have record that at one point it existed. You try to find the best any other fandom. The, yeah, the crazy thing is, any other is, fandom, not there just isn't. TF Wiki though. Like, there's also TFU.info is another good resource as well. Like, even the Cybertron page like has good pictures and stuff like that. Like, Transformed it's, as well. What's I mean, that? If you want to see a, a detailed list of each accessory each figure ever came with, Transformer Land is where to go. There's oh, there's yeah. not another reason. Yep. TFU is good for that. Transformer Land is good for that. Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah, it's it, yeah. It, it's just nuts. Like. So, and, and it's all easily placed right in front of you. You don't have to dig through like 10 different pages to find information of each figure. All on the same page, one long list, pictures, release date, name, size, class, everything you need to know about that toy is readily, readily available, literally one click away, one search bar click away. But, but I even think like, you know, when I was talking about the liquidity of the market. Like, if I want a G1 Astrotrain right now, right, I can go to eBay, and there will be a zillion listings of G1 Astrotrain. I can just click, you know, buy or whatever, and I have all these different options. I can, like, go. There's multiple different conditions. There's reissues. There's just, like, whatever, right? But, you know, when, when I was you know, getting back into trying to buy, uh, rebuy some of my childhood toys, it's like, I really like Ghostbusters as well. So, so I'm like typing in Ghostbusters and a lot of that stuff wasn't up there. Like there might've been one listing with the, the certain Ghostbuster that I want. It's not in the condition I want. So then at that point I have to like put a search in and I, you know, it's like, I'm really having to hunt it down. Whereas like literally with Transformers, I could just like, if I had the money, I can, you know, I can go ahead and get it yeah. on eBay, like, right there, now. There are so. very few instances where it'll be hard to find at least one listing of what you're looking for on eBay, DFW, Facebook, any other yeah. means of buying it. It's very rare that you won't find a listing for it. And it's happened to me a couple times where I tried looking for something and I couldn't pop up. But it's usually something extremely specific. Like, when I was looking for a, a, recent, a couple months ago, I had bought the ROTF Legends Devastator off of someone. Uh, but the scavenger came broken, so I couldn't combine it. And so that one was tougher to find because only once did they release it individually, and that was in Japan. And all the other releases in the U.S. were packaged together. So trying I mean, to look for something that if specific. If you wanted to buy the whole set again, though. Yeah. But, you know, trying to find that one individual piece yeah. was tough. But, I mean, I literally had to wait all but two weeks until someone put it up on eBay. And I, <laughs> I, I bought it. And, you I mean, know, I, since then, I've seen a couple. I mean, I can up. rattle off some really hard to find Transformer stuff. But that's only because I've been collecting it for, you know, like 15 years. And I know, like, all the weird niche corners to look for it. You, you know, it's stuff that 90 percent of people don't know exist and don't care. You know, I'll be I'm like, oh, that's neat and whatever. You know, it's right. not. not I think it's also stuff. unique to us. The other side of that liquidity, if you want to get rid of Transformers. 
most times they will hold their value. I'm, I'm sure you guys have tried to sell, you know, Marvel Legends or Black Series. There's almost never any return on that. But Transformers, oh my God. They, so, they, they retain most of their value. It's pretty unique. I, I made the mistake with, uh, like, I bought some Star Wars stuff or, like, a fair amount of Star Wars, right? And I tried to sell it. And, like, literally for my lot that I had spent, like, let's say $1,000, the, the toy dealer is like, I'll give you 100 bucks, And I'm like, there's no way I'm doing this for this, right? But then I couldn't sell it. So I finally, mm-hmm. like, at, uh, uh, at TF Expo, I, I just put a sign out. It's like, make me an offer. I'm like, kids are come by. I want this. Yeah, yeah, two bucks. Okay, sure, whatever. Three bucks. Like, here, take it. Like, you know, whatever. It's just I could, I could not give the the Star Wars away. And, and Marvel Legends is the same way, depending on what it is. Like, there's certain figures that, you know, really go up in value and hold value. And then there's other ones where it's like, and that's, and that's most of them don't. Yeah. And yeah. I think and a lot of it's because, because toy biz versions are like, no one wants those anymore. Yeah. And yeah. even like the stuff pre 2016 from Hasbro, like Hasbro started redoing them all in much better versions. And it's just, it's killed the old versions because it's like, Oh, it's, you know, comic book, Spider-Man. Like you just want the best looking one. He's, he looks how he looks, you know? Yeah. And, and there's a lot more diversity in collectors with Transformers for that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, like with, with the Marvel Legends stuff, it's like I only want comic characters or like Rob said, I want the best looking version of this character. One, they release how many how many Spider Man they release in a year. You know, every time you're gonna find a better and a better one, and All the of last them one is gonna be year. worth yeah, the last one is gonna be worth jack. Uh, I, I was talking to to one of my buddies about because um, I only do the movie stuff. And we were talking about how Studio Series hasn't really affected the the older things. Uh, like if you if you look at uh, prices for a lot of the Revenge of the Fallen stuff, stuff we've gotten updates of, it's still expensive. You know, because there's still people out there who want the original version or who collect both, like me. So they still hold value. Whereas a bunch of other stuff, like the Spider-Man stuff, for example, like they release a new one, no one's going to care about the about the old one anymore, especially if it's you know like. Like you said, the Toy Biz ones, where it has, like, maybe five points of articulation. You know, no one's going to want... Why? What's the point of buying that if it's an inferior version? Well, I've I'm actually been... Curious, I was going to say, uh, the, the new uh, Studio Series, like, they've re-released some of those in, like, slightly different decos, right? So, have those... Like, I haven't even checked on prices, but has that really kind of killed the market for, for those figures? Or, or I don't even know what the market is for Studio Series at this point. Um, a lot of the stuff is, I mean, the really popular ones are the, the big money ones. Like, uh, Ironhide still sells for about 50 across yeah. the board because he's considered one of the best versions of the character. Um, most of the other ones were very readily available. He was the only one that was kind of like up and gone. You know, if you mm-hmm. saw him, you wouldn't see him again. Everybody else kind of stuck around for the most part. So studio series itself isn't really... I would say, I mean, they're holding their value. Like, you can get at least retail for them back, but you won't really make yeah. any money off of them unless you're talking about, you know, unless you're talking about Ironhide. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe Starscream, especially the original Fallen version. Once that's sold out, it you know, doubled in price. This is what I've noticed. Oh, I didn't even, I haven't even, like, was I have pretty much all of them except for the two, like, the, the ones that came with the, the cassettes reissues. So I have every other release, so I haven't really checked on the aftermarket on those but i just know like there's a couple where you're gonna be paying a little bit extra where i think ironhide is the only one that i can think of right now where it's like really up there and especially now that they released a like upgrade kit for it even the upgrade kit is like once it's sold out it's, I, I checked on ebay today it's like worth like like 10 15 more than what it retailed for uh but as far as like the other movie stuff like i haven't noticed i haven't really noticed a change and if anything movie stuff has actually gone up in recent times because the people who are my age you know i turn 23 next month i grew up with this stuff i finally have disposable income i have full-time work i can go back and buy all these figures i either i had when i was younger or i didn't have when i was younger and that's what i'm doing now is i'm going back stuff that i couldn't get when i was a lot younger now i can go back and get and that's where this stuff is like shooting up in price i had you know stuff that was worth you know people couldn't get rid of back then 
Like I remember at the time, it was kind of a joke to offer people bay formers as a trade <laughs> or to sell because nobody wanted it. And now, especially the Revenge of the Fallen stuff, like Mixmaster Loose is a sixty dollar figure. Sealed, I've seen it sell for a hundred and twenty, and it's like a consistent, not just you know. Sometimes on eBay, you'll see one person sell it. It's usually just you know a seller trying to shift the market. But it's like consistently, I've seen it selling for that much. You know, you when start got, looking. When I got Go Studio ahead. Series Rampage in, um, and I had my old Revenge of the Fallen Rampage, and I mean, st he's still a neat toy because he's got the the rubber treads and stuff to kind of flail around. But you know, it's like taking it back to comparing to other lines. Like it's like, oh, this one is in the right colors now from the movie. Not that anybody wants to remember that movie, but. You know, it's like it didn't kill the value of the old one. I still sold the old one for like 20 bucks. Mm. I mean, great. That was on eBay with shipping. So I got like maybe 13, 14 dollars out of it or something. But that's not bad for a figure that just had a superior version come out that combines mm. into Devastator that is more screen accurate. It's in the right damn color for one. Like, the, the old one didn't immediately become crap. I, I've been selling a lot of my Revenge of the Fallen stuff, which is honestly probably mm. one of the best if not the best movie toy line we had anyways mm -hmm. um pretty oh, yeah. pretty easily yeah, there's no pretty doubt mm -hmm. it's not and really even yeah and, and even like the really the only ones where i've seen the value get kind of tanked is and it's really hit or miss is with the chug stuff because we've gotten at this point we've gotten for about a good chunk of the characters have already gotten multiple toys made out of. Yeah. So, you know, the original like 06 to like 09 classics, the classics and then the universe two stuff, a lot of that stuff you can now find for dirt cheap. Like I remember at a time hound was what, like a 60, $70 deluxe. Yeah. And now we have like three, four versions of hound. And that one is maybe gone down to 20, 25. Yeah. Which is still I mean, more than retail. I, I think. Yeah. Part of it, though, too, is, is again, spoiled by choice that it's like, oh, if you want a hound, like, there's now, what, three chug hounds, I think, right? Is that yeah. right? Um, so, yeah, like, is that right? I, I think there is. I, think I there only was, know like, of two. I can't think of the third. Well, there's the original. Well, there's, there's, there's the Siege one. Universe, Hen K. There's the um, Combiner Wars. Wars. And then oh, Combiner Wars. Wars. I was, I'm, I'm just thinking of the U.S. ones. Um, yeah, and even like yeah, and even in Japan for like you know the collectors who like to go outside of the box and you know learn about all that kind of stuff where there's all these different variants like like the Henke ones that's a drastic diff different variation even that's another choice and then now you got the masterpiece if that's what you're into so there's another choice so you have tons of choices and there's a buyer for everything the, the when, thing with that Transformers. Shocks the thing that shocks me though too is like the combiner wars like i think that hasbro is actually really smart to make this stuff like a trilogy because then like what happened was is like there'd be people that got in at titan returns or power of the primes or whatever and they're like well i need to have the whole trilogy i need to go back to combiner wars and so then like all these combiner wars like i would have never have thought like at the end of combiner wars where stuff like <laughs> people were just clearancing blowing stuff out and like now, oh, and now it's like, worth a ton. Like I mean, it's oh, held yeah. its value, if not, you know, oh, shot up. Oh yeah, even when more. I when I was when I sold off my all of my chugs, because when I was going through the restructuring of my collection, I realized that the stuff that I truly care about is stuff that I have a personal connection to, and that's the beauty of Transformers is that there's so much choice. You know, it, it, uh, I'm not a huge G1 guy, and it really. I didn't grow up with G1, so I don't really have attachment to that. So I sold off most of my masterpiece, and I sold off all of my Chug stuff. Now I'm sticking to stuff that I have actual attachment to. But when I was selling that, the Combiner War stuff, oh my god. Like, I bought the, the Unite Warrior Superior for 100 and I sold it for, like, you know, what did I sell it to? For, like, a 120 130 I think. I think you, you bought it for 120 Yeah. I did but buy like, it. I think it was 150 I forgot which one I got. Computron, I think I paid like one fifty, and then I sold it too for like. Issue came on, but yeah, you Computron, you made money on. But when I I bought your Superior for one fifteen, I had to sell it on again for like seventy once the reissue was announced. And, and all the other, but all the other stuff, I mean, um, and even characters like like Alpha Bravo. At first, you would think that no one would want it because like you know he's not even part of the the original team. But I got like 
30 40 dollars for him because it's the only toy that they have of that character the same thing with the uh Road. What was the name of the, the truck wild rider? Off road. Whatever off road he he held value. So, yeah, Rook. Rook too. Yeah. Rook man, Rook was a great freaking toy. And he was a mm-hmm. I sold him for thirty, forty dollars too. Yeah. And uh the ones that the one and then even stuff like like the only ones that I had to go kind of bargain bin prices were the the earlier universe two stuff. Because a lot of them got way better updates. But even then, it's like it's not like I was getting, you know, five bucks a piece for them. I was still getting ten, fifteen dollars, which was what retail back then. Nine ninety nine was retail for them back then. I got my money back. That's really all I cared about. You know, I didn't have luckily I didn't have to do what you did with your Star Wars stuff and sell it pennies on a dollar. I got most of what I put into it back, if not more. I think a part of the reason for that is like you know when we compare it to these other brands like marvel and star wars you know like way bigger franchises much more household names than transformers even though transformers i think are pretty household people know what they are again because of the bay movies but you know we talked about how like marvel and star wars are very dependent on movies um transformers i, th- I think are much more dependent on cartoons and very rarely in the entire franchise of the brand, the history of the brand, has there not been a cartoon on sh- on the air. You know, either one that's showing or they're prepping for the next season or they're prepping for the next show. And so they're showing reruns like it's always out there. I think there was like a little gap in like 93, 94 mm-hmm. before they did G2 where there wasn't any might not have been product on shelf. Other than that, there's always been something on the shelf. And you know, like Star Wars, I assume probably wasn't doing much in the 90s. But, you know, yeah. then Episode 1 came out and they yeah. made too much. And then they no, tanked the, the, the market. But, you know, it, it's no... I don't think a lot of other franchises can say, like, Marvel, sure, it's always there and in the mind's eye. But outside of, like, you know, Spider-Man, the animated series, you know, there's a cartoon that's out and then it's gone. And then it's a while before anything else co- comes up again. Or they had a lot of, like, one or two season shows that never found an audience you know yeah uh, but like uh, there, the MCU, there wasn't awesome. a lot of media on tv they, no. they had a they had a great uh story in the toys that made us about uh star wars that like so Kent hasbro bought kenner and literally all they had to do is send george lucas like ten thousand dollars a year to like renew their license and i think like whatever the the original toy deal back in the 80s was was really good for kenner but then they lost the license because they weren't willing to pay $10,000 a year on it. Cause they're like, well, you know, when are we going to sell star Wars toys again? Right. And so then, then when Lucas came out with the, the episodes one through three, they had to renegotiate the deal and it was a much worse deal for Hasbro to, to get the toy brand. So they could have been making just ridiculous amounts of money if they would have just kept the, uh, the original deal. So, I mean, yeah, so that, that goes hindsight's 2020. Yeah. Right. And like, you know, so I think with the cartoon, keeping it fresh to some degree and keeping product on the shelves for that long, combined with the fact that while I do think we get upgrades of things that tank earlier values, like, you know, especially like, you know, masterpiece 2.0s come out or, a third party does a figure, you know, that can sometimes affect some original price, but it's a much lesser occurrence because whereas you can pick up like a toy biz Spider-Man and the new Marvel legends, the latest, I should say, whatever the latest Marvel legends, Spider-Man is like, Oh wow, this just, I have no need for this other figure. Even with transformers, because the toys, you know, just kind of the paradigm of what it is, is so awesome and unique. Like even old toys have value because they are unique experiences. So it's like, here's a yellow rampage that doesn't fit with anything from revenge of the fallen. This red one definitely fits that, you know, air quotes need better, but this is still a unique toy that does its own thing. That is fun and has value. You know, things just don't as easily get obliterated and it does happen. Like I think revenge of the fallen prime killed any need for the first movie prime leader class toy. But, you know, even then, that's still its own unique toy that's completely different, that has a completely yeah. different play pattern, different experience. And, and that so, Prime is still selling for, like, $40, $30, $40, yeah. which is not a lot less than retail. You know, retail for, what, 50 at the time? Something you know, like it, that. It's, it's not like it's it's worthless. It's not it's a $10 still, toy. Yeah, it's still worth some money. 
Because well, there's people out there, me as example, that still want that. I think I think the other thing too at Transformers is there's so many more characters. I mean, if you talk individual characters and transform, like no one has that many characters. Is is what they do. There's hundreds of Transformers. Oh, yeah. uh, of and there's new ones, ones being coming out all the time too. Right, right. And and that's just something that's just not. Like, I think a lot of times, like, you're talking, like, Batman, Spider-Man, whatever. A lot of people just pick that up, and that's that's all they have. Or they might pick up, you know, a few other characters with it. But they're not picking up, like, you know... Like, there are Marvel Legends collectors that are getting everything. But a lot of them, you know, they, they get the main guys, and, and that's it. So, and, and there are a few people, Transformers, that might just get Optimus or, you know, Megatron, whatever. But most of them are, you know, in it for probably at least 10 characters if not more oh yeah and 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 and, you know it's it's selling look at what you got behind you lancer who knew who lancer was before it popped up and everyone started going to the tf wiki to read about it you know you know there's but i mean in the general consensus i mean it's not like this thing came out and everybody's like holy shit we're gonna lancer look at look at the comments like half of them were like who the hell is this you know and but it's still selling because it looks cool and people want to buy it. You There's mean a lot of small people, characters. You mean most people just don't read TF Wiki for fun every day? <laughs> That's what I did for most of high school. <laughs> yeah, most of college, so yeah. Right? I think another important point to talk about here, you know, we mentioned that we've talked about the upgrade figures, you know, in Transformers or in Marvel Legends in particular. But one thing that Serge and I discussed when we originally came up with this topic was one we we can now compare our lines favorably to Black Series and Marvel Legends. You know, for years, co- Transformers collectors have begged and pleaded with Hasbro to treat the collector market as you know real, and instead we got told that we were you know one percent, three percent, five percent maybe of the entire market. But with Siege and Studio Series, both of those two, you can kind of tell that the quality has improved. And the, now the price point is the same as, you know, Marvel Legends and Black Series. Deluxes are twenty bucks. Marvel Legends twenty bucks. Black Series twenty bucks. And the quality, the the paint apps, the build, everything is now much better than it used to be. Prime Wars was a good step towards that, but anything before that uh, was, you know, not not. Oh, yeah. It was it was a toy. It was for sure a toy. And, now and, we and they're they're, they're definitely directly. and they're listening to us too. I don't. Like I said, I don't, I'm not a big chub collector anymore, but every now and then something will pop up that, hey, this is really cool. I'm going to go ahead and buy it. So this is one of three Siege figures that I own. One of the biggest complaints about recent chug was how hollow they were. And that's kind of something that they did in to kind of keep the costs down before they went with the universal, you know, deluxes are 20 bucks, uh, Voyagers are 30 bucks, leaders are now 60 bucks. Whereas before it was kind of like, you know, Target would have them for like 18, Walmart for 16, Toys R Us for when it was around for 20, 21. Now it's like across the board, everyone has it at the same price point. But they're definitely, I mean, look at Starscream with these like collapsible fillers. They're definitely listening to us that we're saying, you know, I don't think a kid is really going to care if this is filled in or not. Really, only we're going to care if this is filled in or not. You know, look it's at how many times hollow. people argue about, yeah, I mean, it's still hollow. It's still hollow don't get me wrong. It's covered up. And yeah, yeah, but you can't. I mean, oh, there, there's transformations and all that. Like you could point to. Oh no, I'm not saying it needs to be a solid piece. What I'm saying right. is, you know, previously they would have just left it open. Who cares? Right. Uh, we care, and now they care about us. But I, I, I think, think too that Hasbro. Uh, a part of this is is that I think before that they really saw kids as their biggest market, and I think with this line that they're like, oh wait, like collectors are actually a much bigger part of the market than what we thought it was. And that's attributed to the rise of nerd culture in general. Nerd right. culture is now in the mainstream thanks to the the, the Marvel movies, the Star Wars movie, the Star Wars sequels. I, I would argue that even the Transformers movies had the small part in that. But because of geek culture is now in the mainstream, there's collectors for everywhere. You know, there's a lot more collectors now than there ever was. And, and I think they've they've started. I mean, just. Look at Unicron. That's literally only for collectors. Okay. And that's proof that we're finally a big enough part of their market to warrant them to try to sell us a $600 toy. 
I like to think that they're finally paying, I hope that they're paying attention also to the trickle down effect in a way of that by having a dedicated fandom for your group that you cater to, even if like your profit margins aren't as huge on, you know, what you're selling to your collectors and to your fanboys and fangirls that having that enthusiastic core keeps your brand alive and keeps your brand spreading out because like if I wasn't deep into it and if like Hasbro had, you know, completely abandoned me, which they almost did a couple times, you know, um, we've had some dark days, like, but because I'm still in it now, my daughter sees it and she loves playing with some of my Hasbro stuff and I lit her, you know, and that doesn't mean she's gonna go out and buy it or whatever, but you know, it keeps it alive in her mind, you know, which maybe they don't, she'll want her own toys or she'll want to consume some media. Like we went and saw Bumblebee together, you know, she wanted to see it. So we went and yeah. saw it. Um, and, and yeah, you know, it's Transformers, like Transformers we're indirectly. Oh, sorry, yeah. It's like, we indirectly keep it alive and bring more profit into it by having that core enthusiastic fandom. That gives that's a great, that's a great point about the enthusiastic core, and you can see the opposite of what happened with you know what people consider our '80s brother, you know, GI Joe. They they don't have that. That did get yeah. fostered, sort of fostered that community, and they died. That's what I was going to bring up too. Was Transformers does a very good job of releasing a product that works well across the board. Again, using this as an example, this is a great looking figure. This is a great looking G1 Starscream. It gives us the Tetra Jets for the first time in an official form. But it's also very simple to transform. I figured it out with the Transformers. Granted, I'm a fan, you know, when you're a Transformers collector, it's pretty easy. They use almost the same tricks here and there. All the other stuff you can kind of figure out by fiddling around with it. But uh, sometimes I'll, I'll spend, you know, a long time trying to figure something out. But the stuff that I can pick up at the shelf on any, any Walmart or Target, this is very easy. To look at and look how they're they're listing the steps on the back of the boxes now too, you know because you know if a parent is trying to pick this up for their kid they're gonna say okay this is only ten steps it's a lot easier for them to to play with, whereas GI Joe it, it did a very poor job at gathering the younger market and that's why I think it kind of failed, you know I think GI Joe is a they, tough brand, it, yeah I think it has it different is, challenges so so I think the tough thing too is is that uh, like Transformers is much more of a global brand as well. Like and you had touched on like Star Wars, like Star Wars just isn't as big around the world as, um, as Transformers. And the same thing with GI Joe, like it's the real American hero. So it's like it, you know, it's not <laughs> going to be as big in, in Asia and, and, and wherever. And it's like the war stuff and, and whatever. So I, I think that that's, you know, part, part of the thing that kind of props it up and like, you know, we don't even think about it in the U.S., but, like, there's just as big a market for Transformers over in Asia as there is in the U.S. And arguably bigger. It's yeah. grown exponentially in the last few years. It is huge now over in, in the Asian market because they spend a lot of time developing over there. And that's again, goes to show how much their care that they're putting into the brand. We love to rag about how, you know, we might get a copy with a loose arm. We might get a missing paint app or a figure might come with some, a, a piece that was missing or a misassembled foot. But at the core, they're putting a lot of care into this. You know, it's, it's not like they're just throwing out whatever they can. Although sometimes it may feel like it. every now and then we'll get a, sure, we'll get a dud. We'll get something that, you know, absolutely sucks. But for the most part, most of the modern figures I've gotten with it's it's just there's a lot i can tell that there's a lot of attention to detail that has gone into it and there's even the very small minute details it still shows that they're paying attention into who's buying these or who's going to notice these yeah i still think a lot of it just keeps coming back to the fact that it's such a dynamite play pattern it's it's fun it's like even if the fiction is terror bad like the movies it's the toys, are, the toys can still be fun completely, you know, whereas if the Spider-Man movie sucks, you probably don't care about having an articulated figure of that character because it's I mean, I mean, it's fun to pose action figures and, and all that, too, you know, and kids can you know, do play battles, whatnot. But Transformers, no matter the fiction, the toys can still be fun. And it's just it's such a completely separate thing that uh, 
I, th- I think just keeps it strong. And it was yeah, fun to think about too. Like with distinct. with the exception of Combiner Wars, not starting that. Um, just you know, as you guys know, like I recently went in way too deep on Marvel Legends. Um, the Combiner Wars was is was really bad. I think for reuse, it, they went overboard with it. Um, but Sorry. like compared to other lines, like Marvel Legends, like they reuse parts for like ninety percent of what they do. You oh, know, yeah. not, you know, like ninety percent of a wave. There's very few new parts in it. Like the build a figure will be unique, typically, or most of it will be unique. And then, like, you know, might be some head sculpts and stuff here and there. But a lot of the rest of it is like reused effects, reused torsos, reused legs, and they kit bash them. You know, to give unique combinations here and there where they can. But like, you know, I'm playing with Pizza Spider Man is what he's known as. Like this body's probably been used on like thirty figures or something ridiculous. Yeah. You know, and you it's, know. It's, uh, I've always, I've always was amazed at how the Marvel Legends collectors can tell that kind of stuff right away. Uh, there's a couple of YouTubers that I watch, you know, even though I'm not into Marvel Legends, it's still fun to look at other collector YouTubers, just every now and then I'll find something that I really like. But I, I believe his name was Anthony's Customs, and he would used to do these videos. He does like, a lot of Marvel videos. Legends. He'll do these Marvel Legend videos where he'll buy, like, a big box of just parts, because he's a big customizer, so he'll buy these, like, bulk lots of parts. And it's always fun, like, watching him pick up a Spider-Man and be like, oh, this is like a Spider-Man body that they've used three different times. Or, oh, this character is actually using a Captain America torso. And it's like, I'm looking at this stuff, I'm like, it just looks like a muscular dude to me. Like, I, how can you tell that that's, you know, this very specific Captain America torso that they've released several years ago? You know, obviously, There's... once you're in, in the line long enough, you'll notice stuff like that. But it's still like, like you said, it's, it's literally they've used the same body like 30 times. I mean, I can throw a batch of silver weapons that all look the same to many collectors and transformers. They'll be like, Oh, that's G one, this that's G two, that that's G one, this. And it's like, your laborers are like this bunch of fucking missiles, dude. And it's like, no, see that one has a rounded tip. That one has a line <laughs> around the edge. You know, this one has, has a little dot on the end. You can see where the sprue is. So I know it came with that release. <laughs> you know, it's nerds, man. That's, that's how we roll. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. But, uh, but yeah, I, I think the one thing, too, really, uh, w- with Transformers is just how many high-end options now that we've gotten. And the, um, the third-party market, which that's not really something that is present in other fandoms. So, you know, we have Masterpiece, right, which is the high-end Transformers line. But then with that, like, we have other companies that are making unlicensed figures that, you know, to kind of either compete or support the you know the masterpiece line and so because of that like those hundreds of figures we've gotten a representation you know a high-end representation of like almost every character now yeah and that's transitioning into another point that christian and i were talking about and that was we just felt that there's a lot of when it comes to the higher end stuff there's oftentimes where we see examples of entitlement where we've seen comments by by collectors where you know it's unfair that hasbro is charging this much for this you know it's like we deserve a chance at buying it and it's like well i don't think anybody really deserves a figure this is a very expensive hobby even if you collect just the very you know even if you collect just retail stuff which isn't that expensive that all adds up it adds up you know you can spend 150 on one high-end figure or buy three leader classes. Either way, you're still spending $150. And this is money that we don't need to be spending. This is, you know, it's we're literally throwing money away at stuff that we're staring at. Or, you know, what I'm using to, to prop up my iPad right now. I have stuff in boxes that I never even see. That I've there's literally a box full of money right here. You know? And it's it's with the higher end stuff, it's just, you know. Like well, I guess saw someone saying I saw, plus behind your head. Yeah. I mean, who's going to spend $500 on a non-transforming Optimus Prime? There's a lot of people who Idiots. hate non-transforming. Yeah. yeah. Idiots like me. There's a lot of people who hate non-transforming figures. But because to me, this is the best representation of the Last Night Prime that's out there. I'm going to spend the money to get it because I can't. And it's okay if you can't. That's the thing that I'm trying to get out. It's okay if you can't. It's fine. There's 
it, I'm not stuff. saying that, you know, it's not, yeah, healthcare. it's literally just stuff. It's, it's okay. If you can't afford a certain figure, that's fine. But once you start trying to bash it just because it's a high price, that's when it starts getting like, okay, you know, like it's not really fair. Yeah. It's it, to some people, this doesn't look like it's worth $500, but to me it is because I appreciate everything that was put into it. And I'm not saying that you can't put your opinion out there. That's also what I'm trying to say. If you have, go ahead, express your opinion. If you don't like something, go ahead. That's the point of a discussion. That's the point of these discussion groups is to say, hey, I don't like this figure, but the price shouldn't be, you know, the reason that you hate it. So you look at it. It's happening way more often now. MP44, I think, really was the first time that it was yeah. just like insane. Every single post was just nonstop. Holy shit! Holy, oh, I'm sorry. Holy um, crap! Holy crap! Holy crap! It's five four hundred fifty dollars. Not really. I mean, if you dig around, I got mine for three hundred ten ship, three hundred five ship. Yeah, Amazon Japan's the win. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it's, it's and people forget. I mean, MP10 was what like two seventy, two fifty when it right, came out. Right. It, people forget was, so that was easily. Ten years ago too. Like oh yeah, when, that's when another thing people out. forget about. Yeah, exactly. So I'll, well, I'll be looking for I, my MP44 here in another 10 years. I think the price entitlement comes from the fact that Hasbro has always had such a consistent shelf, you know, for, you know, well over the past 10 years. You know, I mean, stocking distribution issues aside, um, you know, they had stuff there where the most expensive thing was 50 bucks. And we had that people that didn't care about third party or unofficial or none of that, like, they really got used to that life for a long time. And, you know, if you looked at any other high-end collector's lines, like Hot Toys and Solo Chogokin, et cetera, et cetera, like those prices are way up there. They're way up there. And oh, yeah. I think that was a market adjustment that we were long overdue with. I think Dakar might've been better off easing out, like starting that earlier, that transition into real prices. Um, but, I mean, it was going to happen at some point. And so people yeah, that used to say, you know what, I can get, I, even if I import Masterpiece toys, I can do it affordably. And Takara just, you know, they just ripped the Band-Aid off. They didn't ease it. They just said, we're tired. We're, we're not doing this anymore. I can't tell you why. I, I don't have their books. That's probably the thing that annoys me the most about the price wine posts is like, oh, man, apparently all these people need to be CEOs of toy companies because you really know what's going on. Oh, what, you don't? You work a nine to five like the rest of the schlubs. Shut the hell up. You don't know. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they're not in the business of losing money. So if they feel they need to put the price up there, they have a lot of reason to do it. And if it doesn't work for them, then they're going to adjust. You know, and yeah, you stick with your wallet. Uh, yeah, your wallet. No, that's the thing is that the biggest voice is going to be your wallet. I saw people complaining the other day on, on a post that, you know, oh, they think that Hasbro is jacking up the prices just because they want to. They said that they don't believe all this, all the stuff they're saying about, you know, rise of labor costs and production costs. They say that they don't, that they don't believe that. But then they ended the comment with, I still buy it though. And it's like, well, how are you going to complain about the prices, but you still buy everything that they put out? Hasbro's but, not a fucking charity. They're a business to make money. <laughs> the the, 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 the thing is, is, is not like, it's not like Hasbro or Takara, right? Or like the top company, like it's not like they're Apple or something like that, right? Where like it's the top price stock or whatever, right? Like those dudes are not making, you know, themselves rich off of toys. So like, I mean, the margin is what it is. Like I, I can't remember what the margin is. Like you can go look at their uh, uh, annual reports or whatever and figure out like what the profit margin is that they make on these things. And it's it's not that crazy. And so that and even the even. The, the proof for that is even with friends that we have who are dealers, like people who get these at wholesale costs, they're making a few bucks on these. They're not making ten, twenty dollars or double the price of what they paid for. I didn't I didn't know this until I started having, you know, friends who are wholesalers who, who buy, you know, websites like like Orson and all, all those other friends that I know. They're not buying these these twenty dollar yeah. deluxes for like. 10 bucks they're buying these for damn near retail price like 16 17 like you know slim yeah slim margin it's they're not making a lot of money these things don't have a lot of profit margin in them well, these sir, things are very expensive to make search tell 
tell us the other post you saw with regard to Unicron and the price of Unicron and what that means for the future. There is a person who I don't want to, I don't want, I don't want to name any names or anything or where I saw it. If the person is, is listening to this, then you'll know who it is, but I'm not going to say who it was or anything just because that's just mean to, you know, call people out and all that. Uh, but I saw a post where someone said, I don't know if you guys know the term. This is a very millennial term, but it's, it's, you may have heard the kids talking about it. It's a term called a hype beast. And a hype beast is basically a person who will buy very expensive clothes, very expensive items, just to show off the brand. They don't care what kind of product it is. Just because they slap the brand logo on it, they'll pay for it. And that's, you know, I guess akin to that are, I guess, Apple fanboys, which I kind of am. There's, you know, there are those hardcore Apple fanboys who will buy anything with the Apple logo on it. And I think every, every kind of, market has those kind of people but there was someone who was afraid that if unicron is successful then that's what the fandom is going to become it's just going to become a bunch of people buying hype and items because it has the transformers brand on it and that they're going to abandon the other collectors that's not going to happen 90 percent of hasbro's income are these retail toy lines the unicron is even though someone did the math and it was like what several what is it like 20 30 million or something like that no, it's more. like four and a half million yeah it, it, that's in the grand scheme of things that's still a lot less of their revenue like a fraction of their revenue there they will just because just because collectors now are willing to spend higher prices or higher a lot of money on higher priced items doesn't mean that they're going to completely alienate the collector who can only afford the Steve stuff or who, who can only afford bot bots. They're, they're not going to alienate those types of collectors because, you know, that brings in the bulk of their money. All that these high priced items are meaning for the brand is that they can make them, which for the people who can afford them is great. And I'm not saying that for Unicron that, you know, one paycheck and i can pay for it obviously not you know but it's with careful spending and careful saving i think it's very doable you know you might not be able to get every single figure that you want leading up to it but i think it's doable it's not is really good you know oh yeah (laughs) i i feel like now that there's been a shift at, at hasbro where they're saying you know what Instead of, like, let's just try to make whatever cheap crap we can throw out there to, like, make a buck, that they are like, hey, how can we make this right? Like, what can we do? And obviously, like, there's, you know, there, there's, you know, prices, like, they, they can't do everything and go crazy. But, um, you know, for the most part, they're like, what can we do um, to make this a really cool figure? And so that's what, like, I feel like all of the Siege figures, for the most part, like, I mean, it's, I'm very, I'm 95% happy with, with everything. And like, I mean, that Jetfire is amazing. Like, it's just, um, I I don't know. I I feel like that they could have taken that Jetfire and they could have thrown it into a $50 price point and it wouldn't have been as good, you know, or they, you know, go ahead and make up a new price point, $80. And, you know, actually give us this incredible figure that, that in, in all honesty, I would just as well have that as the fan stores one. And it used to be that way. You know, look at back at the mid-2000s. How many times did we get new heads? Very few times did we get new heads or any parts. It was back then. Back then, it was only repaints, pretty much. There was no retools. Very seldom we would get a new head or a new part or a new molded piece. But most of that stuff was up to the Botcon guys to make, you know, these characters with the new heads or new accessories. Uh, look at the the early classic stuff where they just sh- would just straight up repaint a figure and call it, hey, now it's Cliff Jumper. Well, it's a red Bumblebee, but it's it's Cliff Jumper. Or here's a white Optimus Prime. It's Ultra Magnus now. And then now we're actually getting a legit Ultra Magnus with legit armor who can also have an unarmored version of the figure. And the same thing with, with Jetfire. We didn't have to get both versions of it. 
We didn't have to get the armored and then the non-armored version, but we did. Like I think to kind of restate what you were saying there, Lucas, is Hasbro is now showing that it's willing to put the toy first and let the price be what the price is. Right. And that's I think that's what they did with Unicron. I think that's what they did with Titan class um, and everything going on. I think that's what they did with Jetfire. I don't even know if that's Titan class. Is it? Jetfire's. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's like Commander class. Commander, okay. right? Yeah. I, like I so you know. They, oh, sorry. Go on. Sorry. But no. But I mean, I mean, that's pretty much it. I think they're looking to put the. They still have price points they need to hit for a lot of things, but they're experimenting more and more with make the toy, let it be what it is, and can we find a market for it, and can it do well for us? And if people buy it, they'll continue doing it. If people don't buy it, if it doesn't fund, then they won't do it. I think cool. on the smaller end, you can look at you know Botbots as an example of that too. But that's them trying to enter the blind bag market. That's a huge deal for brands other than Hasbro. Hasbro said, let's get some of that with Transformers. They did. It's selling like crazy. I mean, that, that was a huge risk for them. They're tiny toys. They're probably not expensive to make, but you know, if they just sit there, they lose money. They, they just fly off shelves near me. Mm -hmm. So, so you know, the, the one thing is, is that, you know, so collectors are complaining. And again, this is like with, with choice that they'll say, uh, you know, we get these hollow cruddy figures or whatever, right? So they release this. So this is at a leader class price point, right? And it is a absolutely fantastic figure. You know, yeah, it might be a little bit overpriced, you know, and they throw some extra, you know, junk on or whatever, right? But it's like, you can't have it both ways. Like, if you want them to make nice figures, here's your nice figure, you know, like... If you want them to go back and get make the figures with waffles, like you can have it. It's called Cyberverse. It's out there. Like they, there's a Shockwave in, in Cyberverse as well. You can get that toy too. You know that's fifteen bucks. So um, there's there's plenty of options out there. So yeah, I, I kind of wanted to get on a, a mini soapbox in regards to entitlement. Just because I knew at some point, I mean, that's that's what we're talking about here, you know, is are we too entitled to a way or some collectors too entitled? Um, I both think entitlement is a great thing for uh, commercial business and for, you know, non-mandatory things, things that can just purely be driven by the capitalist market. And I also think it is the dumbest concept to have. And something comes because I don't feel you can really state entitlement for something that isn't important, you know, which is gets back to what you were saying earlier, Serge. So when people are like, this should be at such and such a price so I can afford it and it fits my life. Like, no, it doesn't. Like, it's not important to you. So shut up. <laughs> I mean, now I think it's totally fine to say too rich for my blood. I'm out. You know, like I think that's fine. But, like, you need to deliver this to me in the way that it's like, no, dude, this is a purely capitalist venture. Um, I think it's great, you know, in a sense for the company making stuff, because when people want your stuff so bad that they're mad at you, that you won't deliver it in the way that they want, that tells you you're doing something right. You know, now, if ultimately they don't buy the figure, you know, that's that's bad. But, you know, again, they can't sell Unicron for 50 bucks because obviously they wouldn't. You know, they'd be losing their money. Um, you know, if Optimus Prime, if MP44 tanks, spoiler alert, it's a fucking masterpiece Optimus Prime, they could have made it $700 and it still wouldn't have tanked. You know, that's, it's it's just not going to happen. <laughs> like, they couldn't have done that with, like, Black Arachnia, but, you know, or Hound, but they can do that with Prime. They can do what they want. And I think also they use some of those leaders to fund the rest of the waves. Again, I'm not a CEO of a toy factory, but, like, we know how, like Hasbro does that with Marvel Legends all the times. That's why they put Bass in the figure and they reuse so many parts. It's they cost out the wave and that they've told us many times. They cost mm -hmm. things by the wave and, you know, Masterpiece doesn't have waves, but it obviously has lines. Um, and as I think, you know, there's a G1 line. There's uh, now there's the movie line. There's the Beast Wars line. Um, so they obviously do that to try to get collectors that can complete their things, but they can still make their profit. But, you know, to bring it back. I don't, as a company, you want people to feel entitled to your work. I think, I think it means you're doing something right. You know, it's, yeah. it tells you there's something good there. You know, I, I think I even posted on the public 
one of the public uh, Transformers Facebook's page posts about Unicron. Like, I mean, I backed it day one. I backed it within like five minutes of hearing about it, you know, whatever. Um, but it's, I do think they could have been a little more accommodating without shooting themselves in the foot. Cause I felt there was a short time with, you know, and it's a lot of money, 600 bucks for six weeks on so a lot of people. It's just not something they can scrounge together, you know, unless they put it on their credit card and pay 25% interest, you know what I mean? But maybe that's worth it to some people, you know, some people it's not. Um, I think they should have looked into some other options, but you know, again, it's just to say, if it doesn't work for you, then you just don't buy it. You can be yeah. bummed that you, you, you can't buy it or afford it, or you can make some changes to make it happen, but it's not important. It's, it's, and, a, to, it's a toy. So your sense yeah. of entitlement is ridiculous. And, and a lot of people don't realize that each toy has a market. With Masterpiece being the basic, biggest example of Western collectors thinking that we're the only market, Takara... Now, I mean, now with the brand, what did they call it? The brand, brand unification. unification. Now you can get this through Pulse and stuff. Whereas before, you had to get this through a collector shop. You get Masterpiece stuff. They didn't. They did not ship this stuff to American stores. Stores who were getting like American or Western stores who were getting these figures, they had to order it from an Asian wholesaler, and then they had to pay a markup on it, and that's why it was more expensive here. You know, using Prime as an example, it might not sell great here in the States for the price. But in Japan, as long as it sells in Japan, they're happy. That's all they care about. I mean, look at these fan votes where only Japanese fans can vote. Uh, they've said it time and time before. Decepticons do not sell in Japan. That's why we're getting so many of specific characters. Why do you think we're getting so many of the Beast Wars stuff over the G1 stuff? Because that's what's selling. You know, the, the, the Beast Wars stuff, Beast Wars in Japan is huge. And it's selling like crazy. You know, at first when, when, when Megatron first came out and everyone's like, oh my God. Beast Wars like, Megatron? You know, yeah, Beast Wars Megatron. It's like $300 or whatever it was when it was first announced in American or uh, Western retails. But like that thing sold, especially Dinobot. Dinobot was like the first masterpiece figure that was just like up there i mean i think it retailed for what like 250 in western stores you can get it from it was japan a big jump from primal and cheater you can get it from from japan Jap japanese stores for like what was it like 200 it wasn't like that much of a savings but it was still a pretty big difference and it the last tfcon that they had here in chicago they were selling it for 350 sealed like th these things sold they sold like crazy and there's people who are going to say you know mp44 i can't wait for mp44 to, to tank you know and, and i'm not knocking on third party because i love third party i have a lot of third party stuff myself but take a third party representation of a g1 character take the takara G representation of the g1 character and masterpiece always always the takara is going to be worth more always if it's modern like starscream mold that thing is just so old like make toys is worth more i know because i've recently sold them but like that's the exception to the rule is the yeah. thing. Yeah, mo most uh, uh, of the time it's not. But I, I think the other thing too is is like I think just the fact that we have all these choices really spoils all of us because I think that you know in in 2006 when classics came out like I was so excited I was like oh my gosh there's a new Optimus Prime on the shelf and it, it you know looks G1 and whatever and like all those characters right and I was so happy with all of that. And, and now it's like something new comes out or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, like, is it like, I've got, you know, 20 Optimus Primes or whatever that are all similar looking, you know? And so then I almost feel like I end up nitpicking each individual one because, you know, that, oh, well, this one is perfect except for this, you know, or this is perfect except for this. And so that's what I, like, I, w I was happy with my one prime, you know, 12 years ago. And now I'm like, you know, not happy with my like 20 primes. If that, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Dude, I mean, Endless. it's a fucking great time to be a transformer collector. Oh, it's really good. Like it's we're crazy. here sitting here bitching about MP44. There are two great third party options for masterpiece cartoon style, uh, Optimus primes two that are like what? 150 each or something. They don't have the trailer, but most people don't, Especially like the cost 
conscientious collectors don't care anyways. Like you even have options at that. I mean, but, good lord, how great is that? And even MP, even, even MP10. Yeah, I was gonna say MP10. Or yeah, and MP10 like, it's, it's it's not dated. I mean, it's it's a little dated, but it's not it's aesthetically horrible. dated. It's not that bad. Yeah, but it's not like the toy is still a great toy. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And it's it's still a great it's still a great Optimus figure. But now yeah. we have 50 other options that we didn't have 10 years ago. You know, like Christian yeah. Christian and I like to say that personally, the golden age of Transformers collecting in 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 my opinion i don't know if christian agrees with me my opinion was like 2009 to like 2011 but it's like personal opinion because that's when i remember having the most fun with it because i was brand new to collecting i felt like all i met a lot of cool people a lot of my friends were into collecting you know there's you you walk into the that was when like the peak of movie figures you walk into the uh, walmart and there's like a huge aisle full of transformers now you're you're lucky if you got a little end cap with maybe one or two hanging on the pegs you know i think uh, each each era of collecting has its ups and downs but as far as choices and product now is it's 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 undeniable right now is the best time to be a collector if you're brand Absolutely. new to collecting classics if you're brand new to collecting classics you have like lucas said like 20 different optimus primes to choose from and they're all at a relatively affordable price. You don't want if you don't want the new Siege Optimus Prime, cool, you can get the Classics one. Don't like the Classics one, cool, you can get the Power of the Primes one. So there's like 50 of them that you can choose from, and you can yeah. jump in to the fandom very easily, and it, because of the resources are there, the product is there, and it's all pretty much easily accessible. Even with the retail stuff, you don't find it in stores. You can find it usually. You can usually find it on Amazon, uh, BBTS, or other online retailers. Sure, you might pay a little bit extra. You're gonna have to pay shipping, but if you really put in the work, you'll get what you want. And there's some collectors who don't like ordering online, and that's fine. They prefer to find all their stuff in in store, and that's fine. But if you really put in the effort, you're not gonna be left behind. Whereas before, you know, when there wasn't as many online options. You know, you only had BBTS to choose from. If you missed out on a pre-order or you didn't find it on shelf, you would have to pay two, three times price on eBay. But now it's like, you know, oh, crap, I forgot to, you know, I, I, I saw this figure the other day at Target. Now it's not there anymore. I can just go on Amazon and, and buy it. And it's at my doorstep in two days. You know, when when could we do I mean, even, even now, they, they even have like the one day stuff. I can have a Transformer the next yeah. day delivered right to my house i don't have to drive all over town like a madman to look for it i don't have to go on ebay and pay some dude who cleaned out the shelves three times the price for it it's we have freedom to choose how to get the figures yep. i uh like looking at hasbro as a whole um i kind of think the good times are coming to an end um like not, not like tomorrow or anything like that you know what i mean but like I do think like right now is as good as it's ever been, if not the best time, just from mm -hmm. what they're doing, the product they're putting out, even like the masterpiece lines, just amazing stuff all around. But I think we're climbing that hill. I, I, I don't think it can go up much higher because you can only milk the G1 well so long. And like you can keep making, you know, new primes, Megatron, Star Screams, you know, whatever all day long to, to some degree. But they've really tapped that G1 well dry in the main line, you know, to the point where they're like, you know, we're getting our MicroMaster homages, you know, we're getting down to like Ape Face and Snapdragon who, yeah, we know who they are. No one else knows who the hell they are. You know, like I'm looking at my G1 shelves. There's not a lot left that they can go to. There's still places they can go. You know, we've talked before, I don't know if we've talked about it, but how third party, the third party masterpiece stuff has really died down. Like, they haven't gone deep into combiners yet, but because they keep all fighting over the same combiner toy instead of, like, guys, there's, like, six other combiners. Spread, oh, spread yeah. yourselves out. <laughs> but, you know, that aside, um, if you Somebody look at what happened... give me a Raiden. I know that Transwise is working, but hurry up. Let's go. Yeah. Like, but if you look yeah, at Hasbro's property as a whole, so starting with, like, I don't know, what was it, maybe... Uh, Titans Returns? Well, it was before Titans Returns. It was after Combiner Wars. Wars. Okay, it was okay. So I think like yeah. starting with Titan turns, the figures started becoming really G one ish. You know, like they're just like it's almost look, it's a G one, but it looks nicer and has more articulation. Mm -hmm. And then like 
look at what Marvel Legends started in about 2016, which is why I got interested in it now. It's because I looked back and it's like, holy crap, they have everything I want now. Like that Jim Lee 90s style X-Men, that team is about done. How long has Hasbro had the property? And they haven't been making Jim Lee style X-Men figures. You know, they're tapping into my age, it, you know, like my nostalgia. So I think the G1 well of just, you know, redo everything that was G1 almost exactly like it was, but better. It's going to, you know, that's going to die off. The yeah, third party masterpiece. Well, I, I, think, I think off. part of it too and is. Marvel Legends is going to die off. People my age, I feel like, are buying these toys for their kids. And so, you know, I, I have kids that are prime Transformers age. And so I, I feel like that a lot of us, like once our kids kind of grow up a little bit and I, I don't think like I don't have little kids to buy toys for. Like, I think that that's where you're going to see that. Like, I think they're going to move towards more of the nineties properties a lot more. Um, and you're already seeing that right now. Like you're seeing that a lot with Pokemon. You're seeing that with, you know, turtles and, you know, Batman and whatever else. But, um, oh, oh my. I got, I got to interrupt just cause I've thought this like four times through this thing talking about spoiled for other properties. I'm a Ninja Turtles guy as well. We just got the very first splinter of any collector line. And it was a NECA exclusive only in the six inch line. Or an SDCC exclusive. Splinter's like a main character in every Transform or Ninja Turtles storytelling ever. And we have zero. That was the one Splinter we got was a San Diego Comic Con exclusive. Holy crap. You know? Yeah, how do we not get a freaking Splinter? Like. I have the four turtles, but it's like, yeah, because, I don't want to pay SCCC prices. Because most other action figures go the Marvel Legends route, you know, like He-Man, where, where they make a buck, and they reuse that buck all over the time. Mm -hmm. And that's why brands, companies like Bandai did Ninja Turtles. They did that one turtle. They were able to repaint it four times really easily. And then they're like, okay, we'll do a shredder. And they're like, huh, we can't really think of what to repaint it into, except for maybe Foot Soldiers. And then they just said, nah, we're done. We're not going to do anything else. Every time collectors get their mitts into Ninja Turtles, it's the four turtles, and then they're done. Revoltech, four turtles, done. Yeah. And then NECA repaints the same turtle molds over and over. They finally did a shredder and repainted his foot soldiers and then did some remolding to put in other lines or whatever. But yeah, NECA's finally threatening to go in deep on the cartoon line with their SEC reveals. But it's just Ninja Turtles are huge, too. Like, they're a big property, and they're not like Transformers level or anything. But that's just, again, how good Transformers have it, whereas Ninja Turtles, just like, please give us a splinter. Please, in anything. You know what I mean? It just, all we get is the turtles. Sorry. Uh, all right. Well, I think we, we've went for quite a while on this and kind of hammered a lot of our points home. Do we have any uh, final uh, parting thoughts for anyone? Uh, well, a green topping off what Rob said. Just... I think we should just enjoy it while we can, because I do wholeheartedly agree that the G1 well is, it, it's going to dry up soon. It's, it's pretty soon. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's going to, they're going to be running out of ideas. We've, we've, they've already started redoing a bunch of characters, you know, uh, prime will always sell Megatron will always sell, but once they start redoing the, the characters that aren't as big, then that's when I, that's when I personally started getting fatigued was when, you know, at first we had no hounds. Now I have four. At first I didn't have any wind chargers. Now there's three. So it's that's right. when I personally got out of Chug, when I said, okay, I'm kind of tired of buying the same G1-looking figure over and over again. Sure, it wasn't the same exact figure, but it aesthetically was pretty much the same figure over and over again. And that's where I started to get saturated with the brand. So... Enjoy it while we can, even though, you know, the distribution might not be the greatest. Just the, the sheer amount of product that we're getting right now, I do agree. I don't think it's going to last forever. Nothing ever does. You know, I mean, we it's already happened once before. G1 going into G2, G1 had a ton of product. And then G2, nothing. So it's, it's, it's going to happen. Enjoy it while we can. Yeah, try to be happy. Tours are cool. Toys are better than they ever have been now, and just enjoy it. You're not entitled to anything, but you're entitled <laughs> to not buy it. And companies will listen to that. That's the only thing they care about. 
if they see you mad that you can't buy it, that's telling them they're doing it right. If you don't like the price, just don't buy it. That's really all you can do. Well, and I will say, you don't have to buy everything. I probably need to tell myself this. Nick. <laughs> you know. I love you, man. <laughs> um, uh, I will say this. I think when G1 dries up, I think then they might start going in deep to whatever's next, a.k.a. Beast, Beast Wars. Wars. Yeah. You know, and then, I mean, they've already dabbled in it in generations. They did. You know, we got like a Waspinator and a Rat Trap and a Rhinox, and they're all awesome figures. But, you know, they could get in more into that era. They could get more into the Unicron trilogy, which, again, they they started to dabble in a little. Like, they know the G1 Wells drying up. I think that's them testing the waters to see, can we go into some of these other areas to rehash ideas and get those nostalgia dollars? But it'll never be like the G1 well. So, uh, and then uh, one, one final thought, just to, you know, let everyone know, if, uh, if you like us and you like what you do, what we do, uh, you know, consider uh, contributing to our Patreon. Uh, it's uh, patreon.com slash TFYLP. Uh, and you can contribute as little as a dollar per month. Um, and you will get exclusive content uh, and all that type of thing. Um, so, uh, so, yeah. And I guess with that, uh we're we're out for the night so thank you guys for joining me and uh guess we'll see you next week bye